You're listening to international investment advisor Doug Goldstein on the Goldstein on Gelt Show, the financial show where we'll talk about how you can make the most of your money. With all the confusing financial chatter bombarding you each and every day, Goldstein on Gelt will give you the practical information you want and need about living a financially stable life. Here's your host, money maven Doug Goldstein. Okay, we are back. We are talking to Joseph Michelli, who is an organizational psychologist. He's a business consultant. He's also a best-selling author, writing about how great businesses work. And he's a fellow radio show host as well. Joseph, it's a pleasure to have you. It's great being here, Doug. Thank you. You wrote a book called The Starbucks Experience, which I want to talk about. But before we get there, I I just want to understand the connection. You're a psychologist, but you also speak a lot about business. Could you describe what the main correlation is between the two and what motivated you to go into your, your, your specialty? I think almost anybody who's worked a job knows that there are functional and dysfunctional organizations, much like there are functional and dysfunctional families. Uh, I got involved in working on systems research early on, looking at how systems functioned, uh, whether that was family systems or organizational systems, and it just translated really well into what I do today. Okay, so now let me go right to the Starbucks thing, because as... Uh as someone who frequents Starbucks when I go to the States, I, I'm often wondering why I do that so much. And your book, The Starbucks Experience, talks about that. But you're not an employee, yet you chose to profile them as, uh, as, as the main topic of your best-selling book. Why was that? Well, I worked with a little business right down the street from where Starbucks uh, took off in, in the Pike Place market area of Seattle, Washington. I worked for a fish market uh, in terms of where they throw fish and had an engaging customer experience. And it drew me into seeing that first Starbucks store and trying to answer the same question you had, which is why are so many people so drawn to this craveable experience? And I really spent a lot of time working on understanding that and traveling around the world, literally, to uh, better understand that and, and get a better feel for how to create experiences for your employees and for customers that distinguish you from everyone else in the marketplace. Okay, so you're talking about experiences as opposed to, for example, a better mousetrap. Is it really more important? To t- is the experience or is the product ultimately what brings customers? Well, I think unless you have a rock-solid product, it's pretty hard to build much of an experience that lasts for very long. So it's both. But I think many people just get lost in the service transaction. They think about business as that moment where they provide some product or service and they receive their check in return or their cash in return. And really, an experiential brand is one that's looking at all aspects of uh, the relationship that happens between the customer long before the transaction and long after the transaction and maintaining a, a sustainable sustainable relationship. So the focus on relationship I find is interesting because my day job is that I'm a financial advisor and I get this uh, once a week gig on the radio, which I like very much because I get to speak to interesting people like you. But I had a marketing company once come and approach me not so long ago, maybe half a year ago, and they started telling me how my business was going to all be on the internet soon. And I said, no, my business is all about the relationships that I have with clients. And they were so insistent that the internet, which is, I frankly find a little bit less personal, they thought this was the way business was going. But you're saying the opposite, that the relationships continue to be important? Yeah, call me crazy, but I still have a travel agent. Go figure. Um, You know, I I know that I can buy things online. There are times where I need a person to intervene to resolve my difficulty. And um, so I rely on a travel agent for professional business travel. I I think what we have lost is this sense that there's definitely need to have self-service. There's definitely need to have mobile Uh, interaction with customers, but we also need a personal relationship. And places like Starbucks, I mean, they have some great mobile products. Uh, Your mobile phone, you can pay in the States. Um, Your mobile phone will download, you know, direct marketed information to you. We call that the fourth place relationship between a brand and a customer where there's no person involved. But ultimately, the third place, that living room of the community that Starbucks creates through a barista, an employee who serves the coffee, that's what is leveraged into the, the Internet space. And without it, it's hard for brands to really make sustainable connections with customers. Okay, so in your book, you talk about how Starbucks has been successful about reaching reaching out to entire communities, how they listen to individual workers as well as communities. They, they find the growth opportunities in pretty much any market. Are these practices that smaller companies can, can put into play as well? 
Yeah, I, I think this is going to sound revolutionary in some kind of wacky way, but it's really not. I think it's about loving customers. And when I talk about love, I use Peter Senge, the, the real academician who you know talks a lot about learning organizations through his book, The Fifth Discipline. He, you know, love is really caring about the growth and development of the people you serve. And so if as a business, you're not only trying to get the transaction right, get it right for today, but you genuinely want to know what's it going to take to make your customers happy, more profitable, more relaxed, more at peace whatever it might be that you're trying to drive by way of an emotional experience in your relationship with your brand, those companies that do that well are the ones who stand out from the competitions who are just transacting business. Mm -hmm. I hear. We are talking to Joseph Michelli, who is an organizational psychologist. He's also a business consultant, and he's written a number of fascinating books looking at how companies service their clients. So one of the issues that I think a lot of companies have, especially as they get bigger, but frankly, even as they are, are relatively small, is how do you get your employees to constantly, you know, every day, share the love with the clients? Well, I think a lot of businesses expect their employees to do it, but they don't do it toward their employees. So is there really a genuine concern for the growth and development of your employees, or are they fulfillment objects to deliver service through your business? And I think there's a lot of lip service. You know, we have companies that call employees associates, but managers never associate with them. Mm -hmm. um, at Starbucks, they have partners who really do have bean stock in the company. They have stock options. So those employees have a vested interest, skin in the game as it comes to the success of the business. And they're nurtured through employee health benefits, which you know Howard Schultz created for employees because he personally and his family had a father who didn't have health benefits uh, when, when he was a child. So I think if you really do serve the best interest of your customers, even if that costs some extra to the consumer, most consumers understand and want to do business with companies that have a heart and are ethical in the care of their own employees. So in the event that I were to go into a Starbucks and not feel good service, who would be the person that would that I would report that to? Well, I, first and foremost, you should be able to report it to the very person who didn't deliver it to you. I mean, if the product's not right, for example, there's a 100% guarantee you're going to get the product replaced. If the service is not at that level, you should escalate it up to the manager who will then kind of deal with it and make it right for you. And then it goes up to the district manager and all the way through the channels. Um, you know, clearly you can go on mystarbucksideas.com website and you can report your complaint as well as your idea for improved quality experience. And uh, there's just so many ways in which they allow you to communicate with the brand and are responsive to the voice of the customer. And again, you're saying to communicate with the brand as opposed to communicate with management or the company. Why do you refer to it that way? Yeah, I, you know, I think that we, we've gotten to a point now where people write about Starbucks on Twitter. They just say the <laughs> word Starbucks and some somebody at Starbucks is responding to that. So they really are talking about a brand. They're not talking about a person. And so anytime you reference the brand, there is a response from the brand through a person back to you. Mm -hmm. So um, we've really gotten to that level, I think, in society so often. And I think brands are really what people say about us when we're not around. So, um, you know, it's, it's when people are talking about us uh, that we talk back to them. Uh, it's interesting the way you describe it. It's what, how people talk about us when we're not around. So for small business owners, which would be the type of people uh, perhaps listening to this show today, there, there are a number of principles which you write about. You have the five principles in the in the book. Could you describe them and maybe see if they apply to smaller businessmen? Sure. I mean, I think one of the first things in business is to try to help uh, focus on the fact that it's not about you. It's about your customer. So trying to have the customer have some ownership in your business. Uh, I often liken to the notion that I, I never wash a rental car. And I think when it comes to business, you want your customer to not feel like they're renting uh, some time with you. So you got to find a way to include them in the business. At Starbucks, that's, you know, having 7,000 ways to customize a drink, for example. Um, everything matters. I think really we have to look at this from the eye of the customer. We have to look at the little details. We have to look to the annoyances that are created in the business. And many times the best customer experience is just removing a few of the barbs in the hook that grab the customer negatively. Um, surprise and delight, you know, you have to have the solid platform of a product. And so you need to delight your customer with consistent delivery of a quality product. And then you have to surprise them every once in a while with something that is a value add, something unique, a nice wrinkle that uh, they go, wow, that was pretty unusual. So something that astonishes them, if you will, uh, from the aspect of surprise. I think you have to listen to people who don't necessarily like you and the resistance that's out there in the marketplace. You have to learn from, anticipate, 
and really get those people involved in conversations to make your business better because they can become some of your best advocates. And finally, leave your mark. I think that company, social responsibility is important. It's not very well monetizable. I mean, there's plenty of people who've tried to figure out what's the value of, of doing the right thing for people in terms of social giving. Um, and I think those people who try to monetize it lose the whole principle of it in the first place. Mm -hmm. But in the end, it's doing well and doing good all at the same time. So let's touch on this surprise factor because a lot of times, again, as a as a independent financial advisor, a small firm, I get marketers always come to me and say, you know, Doug, you should give a, a toaster, you should set up a flash display on your website, or give a pen. We we do give pens because people seem to like that. Is that what you mean by surprise, or do you mean um, something? Really I, mean, I think I think those are small amenity items that you might do for your entire book of business as a global uh, way of just touching customers. I don't think that does much. I'm, I'm much more interested in customized uh, or, or personalized solutions. I'd be more interested in Doug knowing when my child's birthday is. Um, and, you know, uh, commenting on that, I'd rather you knowing uh, when I'm going to have a significant life event of some nature. Maybe I'm having a, a trip. We just went to Haiti and did some work there. And, you know, I'd, I'd love for Doug to send me a note, uh, two sentence personalized note saying, hope your travels to Haiti are great. And I think for your high value customers, if you're not doing that, uh, they're a coupon away from going somewhere else. <laughs> wow. That's a fabulous way, to, fabulous way to describe it. We are talking with Joseph Michelli, who wrote the best-selling book, The Starbucks Experience, and has written a number of other books. Unfortunately, we are just wrapping up out of time here. Uh, Joseph, maybe you could just tell people how can they follow you and learn a little bit more about what, uh, what you're doing. Um, yeah, josephmichelli.com. That's J-O-S-E-P-H-M-I-C-H-E-L-L-I.com. And thank you so much for what you do and for the service you provide, not only to your clients, but your writing, your radio show. I really am. Uh, it's a great value and a blessing. Great. Thanks very much for joining us. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt Show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to doug at profile-financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.